Hello everyone, hope you've all had a great week and welcome back to Kids Church Online. I'm still not Michelle, she'll be back next week, but instead you're stuck with me this week. Um, hopefully you've all had a good chance to get outside, we've had some good weather the last few days, so hopefully you've been able to take advantage of that and not just be stuck inside like we have been for the last few months, I guess. So, we're going to get to today's story in a little bit. We've got a few special guests and everything. It's going to be great. But first, do you remember what we learnt about last week? Do you remember who we talked about? Not Frank, the other guy. It was Jonah. Hopefully you said Jonah. I'm assuming you did. So good work to you who did. Um, and do you remember what Jonah was doing? He had a special job. He was a prophet and he told everyone else God's word. That's correct. And do we remember where he was told to go? Nineveh. That's correct. Do you remember what he did? Not go to Nineveh. Exactly. He instead went the opposite direction onto a sailor's ship towards Tarshish. But God sent a massive storm to Jonah, if, I, if you remember. And, you know, after some naps, the fool, uh, he admitted he was the reason for the storm. And he was thrown off the ship so that it would, so it would calm the storm. But God took pity on Jonah. And he sent a massive fish to rescue him. I don't have the fish prop with me, but you can look back at last week's video to see it. So the fish swallowed Jonah, and he was stuck inside the fish for three days and three nights. It's probably slimier isolation than we're used to. So while Jonah was stuck in the fish, though, he prayed to God. He saw that God was showing him grace and mercy by rescuing him from the storm. So Jonah took back on the task of going to Nineveh. He repented from his sin and he got another chance to do God's work. And that's where we're going to pick up today with Jonah going to Nineveh to spread God's word. But we're going to introduce some of our special guests. We're going to cross to the Good News News team and they're going to bring us our story. Hello, and welcome to Good News News. I'm definitely not Alex, and I will be your host for this afternoon's coverage of the Jonah story. Today we'll be joined exclusively from the past by one of the prophets of God, the man himself, Jonah. Thanks for joining us today, Jonah. Yeah, thanks for having me. What's no problem at all. So, as we saw in the story last week, you had a bit of a rough time with this whole Nineveh situation. How did you continue after the fish spat you up? Well, it was very strange. After I was freed from the fish by God, he spoke to me again, telling me to go to Nineveh and pro proclaim his message. So that's what I did. But Nineveh was a very large city. How on earth did you proclaim God's message over all of it? Well, it would have taken around three days to go through the entire city, but God's message spread through the city fast. God's message was that Nineveh would only continue for another 40 days. After that, it would be destroyed because of how evil and sinful it was. Wow. No wonder the message spread fast. Well, it spread so fast that even the king heard about it quickly. He stood up from his throne and put on a sackcloth and sat in the dust. And he even issued a decree that all people and animals should wear sackcloths and begin fasting. Wow. God's message must have really shaken the Ninevites to their cause. From what we can tell, the Ninevites believed God's word, so they turned away from their evil ways? Yes, it was actually quite annoying. Now, why do you say that, Jonah? Well, the Ninevites were my enemies. I didn't want them to be saved by God. But since they turned away, turned towards God, and I believe they wouldn't be destroyed. So, what did you do? I went to sit down and I made myself a shelter and sat in its shade. 
because I wanted to see that if the Ninevites had really done enough to stop God's destruction. God even provided a leafy plant to give me more shade. Oh, well, that must have been nice at least. Oh, it was, until a worm came up and ate it. The plant began to die and it was so hot that I began to feel like I was going to faint. I told God that I even wanted to die. Wow, some strong words there, Jonah. Well, the plant was providing me with shade, so I didn't faint or even die from in the heat. Yeah, that, that's a fair reason, and I understand that. But I also understand that God taught you a lesson with this plant. Well, yes. He showed me that I cared more about a plant that not only grew overnight, but died overnight as well. I cared more for the plant than a city full of people with more than 120,000 people and animals inside. And God taught me that he loves all his people as long as they love and trust him. Whereas I was only worried about my own health and relationship with God. So while you cared for the plant that came and died in the same day, God cared for his people who had been sinful and evil until they learned about him and grew to fear him. Exactly. Even after God showed me grace on the sailor's ship, and in the fish, I was angry that he would show the same grace to others. Well, thank you for your time with us today, Jonah. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. We'll continue to break this down, but first, a word from one of you. And now it's time for Kids Church Catch Up, the part of our video where we catch up with some of our Kids Church kids. Hello everyone, my name is Twiggy. I'm one of the leaders at 130 Kids Church at HDD. Today I want to share some of my reflections during this year with you. I think during lockdown I have learned that how weak I am and how easily I can be discontent when things have been constantly changing, such as when I couldn't meet up with my friends as often as I used to, or when I couldn't plan things ahead because no one knows what's happening next week or sometimes even tomorrow. I kept reminding myself to keep things going, but constantly not happy about where I was, and I wanted to go back to the life when there was no coronavirus. And then I realized that I'm really weak, and even I tried to become and strong, but not without fully relying on God and trusting His plan for us. Discontentment is really hard to avoid. So I pray every day to ask God to open up my eyes and heart to see the wondrous deeds he's been doing in my life and to learn contentment because God never changes. And also during this year, I have seen God working among my non-Christian colleagues to help them think more often about where to find peace and who's in charge of this world. And um, this actually gives me more opportunities to share my faith in Jesus with him. And also I've seen how God keeps us close to, close to him by using different circumstances, sometimes even difficult circumstances as well, um, to remind us that he's a big God, but cares about us little humans, which is such comfort for us to um, yeah, live in this year. And I think when restrictions ease, the first thing, um, I would do would be like hanging out with my friends, having dinner with them, and going to church. Um, I miss everyone in church and couldn't, yeah, can't wait to see everyone in person when church reopens. So, yeah, hopefully we can see each other again soon. Bye. Thanks, Twiggy. Great to see you. Now, as we learned from Jonah and definitely not Alex, great guy. Um, God showed the Ninevites grace when they turned away from their sin and towards him when they repented. Even after all of the sin that they'd committed, they, God still showed them grace. Now, this is actually a very similar situation that we face. We sin all the time in regards to our relationship with God. We don't always treat him with love and respect. And we don't deserve that grace that God shows us, just like the Ninevites and Jonah didn't deserve the grace shown to them. But God still cares for us, and he still loves us despite how poorly we sometimes treat him. That's why he sent Jesus, so we could have a way back to him. So we need to remember that we should say sorry to God 
when we, t when we sin and that we need to turn back to him by believing in Jesus. God cares about all his people and he wants them to be saved. If we've been saved by Jesus, we should be very excited that we can be in relation with God and we should try and share this message and our excitement with everyone around us, even to people that sometimes annoy us. Just like Jonah did, the Ninevites were his enemies, but he still shared God's message with them, even though he didn't really want to. We can learn from Jonah that God shows his people grace, even when they don't deserve it, and they can have a way back to God through repentance and us through Jesus. Let's pray about this now. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well and that you're not too bored being at home all the time and that you've been enjoying our little series in Jonah. I think a lot of the time when we hear about Jonah, we don't often think that he's really a great example of a prophet compared to some of the others in the Bible. But I think that Jonah can remind us of ourselves in that um, he was quite scared to follow God's plan and didn't really want um, many non-Christians to be saved and I know that I think that I um, deserve to be saved more than my non-Christian friends sometimes but in the end we are all sinners and none of us really deserve the salvation that we receive and it's all thanks to Jesus that we have that so why don't we spend some time talking to God about that now dear God thank you for your love for all people and the mercy that you show to us Thank you for sending Jesus to save us and that everyone has a chance to turn back to you and be forgiven. Sorry for the times that we think we deserve your salvation more than others and then we don't share your gospel news with them. Please help us to be humble and to trust you and help us to be brave and willing to share your word with others. Amen. Well, now it's time for our memory verse. I hope you guys have been practicing this last week, but if you haven't, I'll, I'll say it for you guys so you can have some memories come flooding back to you. Here is our memory verse. You are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love. That's Jonah chapter 4 verse 2. That's from today's story. So how, how about you guys say it with me this time? You are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love. From Jonah chapter 4 verse 2. We'll have a different memory verse in the next few weeks, so this is the end of that one, but that doesn't mean you get to forget it. Keep practicing in this next week and, you know, tell your parents, tell your friends, um, tell your stuffed animals, tell everyone. It's a good message. But... Now, it's craft time. So for craft today, this is everything you're going to need. Only two crafts this week, not three like last week, so it should be fine. We are going to start off with the page that's got the leaf on it. This is craft number one, and you can get two crafts from a single page. So if you've got a brother or a sister and you both want to do this craft, you can both, you only need to print one page. If you've got more siblings, you might need to print more, but there are two crafts to one page. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna cut the page in half. I've already done that, so it would be bigger, but we've already done that. And then the next step is you can see there is a line to fold. We are going to fold first because we are making a double-sided leaf. So we're just gonna fold nice and carefully. To make sure it's all lined up well, you might want to hold it up to the light just so you can make sure that there's no overlapping pieces that you might then glue. And then we'll take our glue stick and glue it all together nice and easy, making sure that we've already colored it in. And then gluing it nice and flat and then the next step is to cut our leaf out. Not too tricky, not really any tricky cutting this week. We've been quite fortunate the last few weeks to not have any tricky cutting really. That's good for me and for you. So we're cutting our leaf out. As 
super, super easy. If you're still a little bit younger though, you might still wanna get some help from an older sibling or even a parent if they've finished with church. Being super careful with the bottom because it's super thin and we don't want it to rip. Done. So there's what our leaf should look like. It's got our memory verse on the back. It's a little different from our actual memory verse, but it's the same verse, so that's good. You can remind people of that. And then the next part is we are going to make a little worm, like the one that ate Jonah's vine. So for that, you're gonna need your peg, like last week, and some pom-poms, and some googly eyes. If you don't have googly eyes, that's okay. You can draw eyes on with a marker. We found some though, so we're gonna use this. And you're gonna need PVA glue to put the pom-poms down. Regular, a regular glue stick will not stick these. So if you're young, you might wanna have an adult nearby just so they can help you so you don't stick your fingers together because that would be unfortunate. And it's really just not coming out of the bottle. Success. So we're gonna put some glue down over the longer bit of the peg and then you can pick your pom-poms. I've chosen to go for a green body and a blue head. Just get a nice bit of color contrast going. And I can fit about four small pom-poms onto the back, and then there's enough room for the head as well. But depending on your pom-pom size, you might be able to get more or less. So we're gonna just put the head on, and then we'll put the eyes on after. Just something that I forgot to mention, if you don't have pom-poms at your house, you can take up, you can take some paper, colour it in, take some coloured paper and just, yeah, I'll use this as an example, that's smart Alex, and you can just rip a little bit off and kind of scrunch it up and you can make your own little pom-poms out of some paper. You can glue them on the exact same way that we do the pom-poms. We were lucky enough to have some pom-poms, but if you don't, you can totally use paper. So again, we're gonna use our PVA glue to get our googly eyes on. Again, if you don't have googly eyes, you can draw some on with a texter. Gonna be super careful so he doesn't look like he's going insane, because this worm knows what he's doing. We've got our first one on there. Being super careful we don't knock the pom-pom off the peg because PVA glue takes a little bit to dry so it won't be completely set as soon as you put it on, not like the glue stick. Put a second eye on and there is your caterpillar. You can name and make your caterpillar however you want. I'm not going to name mine for copyright purposes. And then you can just open your peg up and put it on the leaf and there's your craft. And if you want to make it look like the worm has had a little bit of the leaf that he's eaten, you can take a few pieces of the leaf off to make it look like he's had a little bit of a snack on the leaf. That is craft number one. For craft number two, it's similar to our craft last week where we made a whale out of the cup, but instead we are going to plant, I dropped it, a bean seed. So you're gonna want your cup, you're gonna want to fill it with some dirt, and you're just gonna wanna dig a little bit down, a couple centimeters, plop your seed in, cover him over, and then, make sure you've not got dirt on your hands, then our actual craft is a page that looks like this. I've already cut one out, and he looks like this. And we're going to wrap it around the cup. Now I've got a plastic cup, so glue's not really going to work. So we are going to use Old Mate sticky tape. So take some sticky tape, put it onto the side 
of the paper where it does have our glue markings, but glue is not going to work. And we'll just tape him on. And it's okay if it doesn't wrap around completely because you're going to want to be able to see some of the dirt anyway. And you can see it doesn't wrap around fully anyway. So that's okay. We'll get another bit of sticky tape. Position him nicely and then just tape him. And you can tell our Jonah story with this cup. You can see that while Jonah waited to see if God would punish his enemies, God was kind to Jonah and gave him a vine for shade. But when a worm ate the vine, Jonah was angry with God for destroying his shade and not destroying his enemies. So you can tell this week's story with this cup and you're gonna want to just water your bean. Um, you don't want to give it too much because you don't want your bean to drown. Um, and just put it in a sunny spot. A parent can help you with this and we'll update you if it grows. We're really hoping it's gonna grow. But that's it for Kids Church Online this week. It's been a pleasure to bring you the Jonah story. Michelle will be back next week with something new and it's gonna be really great, I am certain. So have fun with your craft. I don't know when I will next see you, probably next time Michelle takes holidays. But until then, have a good day, have good crafting time, be excellent to each other, and that's all.